All right, now that you have a basic understanding of how the Thrive Architect Visual Editor works, I wanna drop some time-saving tips before we dive any deeper. So in this lesson, I'm gonna show you some setup type things that'll make your life so much easier and that'll help you shave time off the design process in Thrive Architect. So things like adding your color palette and font theme, saving formatted elements so that you don't have to recreate them ever again, and creating global elements so you don't have to remember to update every page and post when you update something that you have in multiple places on your website, like let's say an end of post call to action. So lots of cool stuff I've got uh, for you in this one, so let's get to it. All right, here we are back in the Thrive Architect Visual Editor. I'm gonna go ahead and add a background section. I just want to get to a color, um, the color menu, but I want to use a background so that I can show you a couple things. So basically, you can access the color menu anywhere. You can do that by adding a, um, a heading or a paragraph, any kind of element, a button. But once you get to this menu, and this is what you're looking for, and I touched on this in the landing page uh, lesson, what you're going to want to do is enter your hex code, and that's the six digit alphanumeric number that represents the colors in your palette. So for each one, you're going to copy that in, make sure that you have the pound sign ahead of the six alphanumeric digits. And then once you enter each one, you're going to go ahead and tap this plus button, and that will add your palette into this um, color, this swatches right here. Now you can do full colors, so check out this bar. I'm gonna change that color to my darkest gray. You can also save transparent overlays. So meaning if I dialed this down to let's say 50, I could save that. So you can see right here, I've saved a couple of mine. This has an 80% opacity. This one's got a 31%. So if you if you know that you're gonna be using transparent low overlays over anything, you can also save those as swatches so that all of the colors that you use are literally saved. Now, if you accidentally save anything you didn't mean to, if you just click on that swatch and come right here and click that X, you can remove that from your swatches. So colors are really that easy to set up. All right, next, let me show you how to add your font theme. So this only works if your font theme is from Google Web Fonts. So if the typefaces in your font theme are from Google Web Fonts, you can set this up. So in order to set up your font theme, again, as long as that font is included in Google Web Fonts, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna go back to your WordPress dashboard Again, you're looking for the Thrive Dashboard and you wanna open that up. That's gonna open up this page and you're gonna scroll down to Custom Fonts and you're gonna go ahead and open that page. And this is what's gonna open. So these will not be here. I can't remember if it comes with defaults. Um, so there may be some defaults here. I'm not totally positive on that. But these are all custom fonts I've set up. So you see my Montserrat. Now, Full disclosure, when you go in to use these in Thrive, you cannot name them. So in my case, I've got four that are the font name Montserrat, and that's what's gonna pop up. So you are gonna have to remember how you sort of set these up. So the way I did it is I created the lightest, right? Because all of these are just different font weights. Okay, so this is the lightest, this is regular, this is semi-bold, and this is bold. Okay, so they're all pretty much the same size. My bold is an 18 pixel, but the, it can get a little bit tricky. But let me show you how to set these up. So first you're gonna come over to add custom font. Go ahead and click that, and that'll open this window. Now this is your preview to tell you exactly what you're formatting. I would have show all fonts recommended. This drop down is where you can select the font you want. So let's just go ahead and randomly select one. And then down here you've got presets. So you can't change this. This is the class that you would target if you're gonna target something with CSS coding. We don't need to worry about that. This is the font size. So you can come down over here and change this to pixels and then put in whatever you want. Let's just change this to 15 pixels. This is the line height. You can adjust this or leave it as is if you're not sure. I'll go ahead and again, you can change this to pixels or percentage. I'll change this to pixels and just add 
let's see, 0.9 line height, and then you can specify the color. So I'll go ahead and add, I'm just gonna add a red, and then save. Okay, so, and if you're ever unsure what that looks like, again, this is the preview. So let me change the font to something I know. Let's see, Pacifico, I know that one's, there we go. So you can see right here. Now, these fonts don't have a bold or italics. So let me show you one that does so you can really see what this looks like. So I'll search my Montserrat because that's got lots of options. So if you're choosing a typeface that's got all these variations, that's where you're going to change things and format it up, right? So like I said, I've got a Montserrat that is a very light weight. I've got another one saved at a regular weight, and I've got another one saved at 600, a little bit thicker, and then one at 800, almost the boldest variation. All right, so that's what it looks like, and if you're ever unsure, that preview up here will tell you what you're selecting. Once you've formatted it the way that you want, go ahead and save that out, and that will be available for you in Thrive. So let me show you exactly where you're gonna find these. All right, let me add a heading and I'll show you how to access your custom fonts that you've set up. So we'll add the heading, come down here to font face, we'll click that. Now this time in the drop down, let me scroll up a little bit, this time you're gonna select custom fonts instead of Google fonts. And here's where I said it can get a little confusing. So for instance, all the custom fonts I saved are the Montserrat, and that's what it pulls in. I'm hoping that they'll release something where you can actually name your fonts so that things aren't confusing like this. But for right now, the best workaround I've found, like I said, is to start with the lowest weight and work up if you have a specific one or just also make a side note, right? Make a legend, write a little post-it that you have so you know the first one is, is formatted this way, the second one, and so on and so forth. So remember, we formatted that fourth one. Bam, I'll apply that, and there you go, right? We had made that red. It's the Montserrat font. It's the same weight that we chose. That's how you can access your custom fonts that you set up, right? So anytime that you create a heading or a paragraph, that's how you're gonna access, access it. Right here in font phase, choose custom fonts and then select the one that you want. Now when it comes to working with headings on one of Thrive Architects templates, there's also a quick way to globally update those. So let me show you. First I need to load a template, so let me go ahead and do that. All right, so here's the Copy 2.0 video sales page. Now I want you to take a look at the heading. So if you click in any heading and you look at this top menu, you can see what heading it is. So this is an H1. If I click on this one, you can see that's an H4. And as we go down the page, you can see this is an H2, and so on and so forth, right? Now let me show you a cool trick where you can style all of these without having to go headline by headline. So first you want to make sure you're at the top of your page and that you're also in the Thrive landing page settings. Once you're in that menu, you're going to click Edit Page Text. All right, here are all the heading styles in this template and you can change them and they're gonna update throughout the template. Now heading one you can't see because that's actually styled white. So let me change that color. We'll style this up a little bit. Everything you style right here, so you can change the uh, alignment, you can change the text transform, the line, the font size, line height, letter spacing. So I'm gonna make a couple adjustments so that you can see them. So you took note of the styling that existed, so let's change that up a little. So we'll make this H1 gray. Let's see, we'll change it to, let's say something really obvious because I want you to be able to see the change. Okay, we'll go that, perfect. And let's change heading two. I'll just change the color here. Perfect, and then heading three, I'll leave the color I'll make it all caps, apply the letter spacing always like, and dial down the font size a little bit. Perfect, now I'm gonna save this. Watch what happens to the template. Bam, it updated, so there's heading one. Let's see, heading two is now, I just changed the color. Let's go down to heading three is now the same styling that I have. Now you'll notice a couple idiosyncrasies, so let me come back up to the top. 
So it changed it to the font that I selected and this light gray, but this portion right here did not change. The styling that you applied in the screen that I just showed you is the global heading style of this template. But any styling that's done in line, meaning once you apply that text, that something is changed in this sidebar menu, that will not update when you update your headings like I just showed you. But there's a workaround here. So anytime that happens in your template, all you need to do is click the heading that you want, come over here and below font face right here, clear all formatting. If I click that, bam, it will remove any inline formatting that was done. Now the one instance where that isn't true for whatever bizarre reason is bold. So right here you can see that this font is still bold right here. You'll have to select that and remove that manually. But that's not as big of a deal, right? Keep going, keep going. Now same thing here, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. The heading 2 we changed to my marigold, but it didn't update here because this was inline formatted. So we'll do the same thing. We'll click in this headline. We'll come over here, clear all formatting, and bam, it changes it, right? Now, if you find anything, like say here, the line height's a little bit off, I wanna make this a little bit tighter. So what I can do is come in here, decide what the line height is that I want, right? So right now it's 1.49 eams. So we'll go ahead and we'll adjust this down a little bit. Perfect, 1.15. Now what you can do, again, make sure you're at the top of your page, Come back to Thrive Landing page, come over to the Edit Page Text, you can click that Heading 3 again, and tackle the line height. So we'll make sure this is in Eames, and we'll put 1 point, and now I already forgot what it was, but we'll go with 1.5. Alright, and then close that, and we can come down here and see that adjustment, that adjustment made. So that's pretty cool, right? And this is the case with all Thrive Architect templates, right? So that's how you can change the headings with very little ease without having to one-off change them and suck away a bunch of unnecessary time. All right, so we're only a couple lessons into this series and already you've seen me style up the same headline 14 different times. Same thing with buttons and the lead generation forms and all those basic elements that we're using again and again. Well, instead of doing that, let me show you a time-saving trick. So the first thing you're gonna do is load that basic template that I showed you in the, in the landing page lesson. So we'll go to choose landing page template, we'll click on this blank, and we'll load the blank page V2 onto this page that I've got open. All right, so here's that page, it just comes with one default heading. So I'm gonna add a heading, and here's what you can do for any element that you're constantly recreating. So I'm going to change this to my H4. Basically, I'm going to style this up the way you've seen me do it a million times at this point. Now what you can do, once you've got that styled up, come over to the top left side in that heading, click that floppy disk icon, and you can save that element as a template. So I'll go ahead and name this my H4 subheadline. Now I could add a category like maybe headlines, which I've already got here, so that I can search all my headlines in my template and then go ahead and save that. Now, anytime you need to use that element, all you have to do is come over to your templates and symbols, search your library, and bam, right there, my H4 subheadline, choose template, and it's gonna load that bad boy. So you can use these on any template, you can use these if you're creating pages um, from scratch, so on and so forth, right? So again, you do the same thing. Create your button, style it up, click that floppy disk, save that, and now you can add it to any page you create. So you're not creating these basic elements anymore. Huge time saver. All right, so I've reverted back to my theme and I wanna show you one more thing, which is how to create global elements. So those are elements that you can create, use across a bunch of pages and posts, and update it in one place and have all those changes roll out in every place that you've used that on your website. It is a super powerful feature that comes with Thrive Architect. So I love to use this for my end of post call to action. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So here's one of my main end of post call to actions. It's for my quick and dirty guide to branding. So this 
portion right here I created with Thrive Architect. So here's a blog post, right? This is one blog post. I've got another blog post. So I've got this at the end of maybe 40 blog posts, right? All these different blog posts. But I only created it at once, and any time I make any changes, they're rolled out to all of these blog posts. So let me show you how I do this. So first thing you want to do, obviously, is create that call to action. And I've already done that and saved it as a template, so let me go ahead and load that. So I'll go to templates, open my template library, scroll down, here it is, branding guide call to action. I'll go ahead and choose template and I'll load that on this page. All right, here's this call to action all loaded up. To make this a global element, you wanna make sure that you're grabbing the whole content box, right? So you get all of these images. Again, you're gonna come up to the top left, click that floppy disk icon. Now, instead of saving it as a template, you're gonna come over here and click symbol. Now, I want you to read this. Element that automatically updates other instances of the symbol when changes are made to it. Now, come back to template element that can be reused on any page across the website. Okay, so this is a very important distinction. Symbols are global elements, okay? So you only want to save things that you indeed want to update, not just use anytime, okay? If they're just for use anywhere you want, you're going to make that a template. But for anything global, you're going to select symbol. So again, you can name this. So I'll call this branding guide call to action test just so that I don't get confused and go ahead and save that out. All right, so now that you've got this saved as a symbol, you can see that that normally green border is now peach and I love that they do this. They signify this so that visually you know you are in a global element. Now to update a global element, you need, there's two things you can do, okay? If you truly want to update this, meaning that you want to roll out these changes everywhere that you've used this, you're going to click edit as symbol. If you want to use this, let's say that you want to create another end of post template, right? So you'll change this out for a different guide and change the headline and the blurb, but you want to use this basic template. That's absolutely possible. What you're going to do is select unlink and that's going to allow you to edit this format it change whatever you want and it's not going to affect your global element if you do want to format it and change things on a global scale then you're going to select edit as symbol now once you click edit as symbol again like i said you can change any of this stuff and then once you're done save and close symbol that is going to roll out the changes okay so again, very important be very careful when you're working with these symbols. Obviously, it is easy to change in the sense that this is this one spot. So if you do forget and you change something, you just come back to that original spot again and you change it back to the way you wanted it. And again, it will update all the spots on your website that you've used this symbol. Now, let me show you how to apply this and add it to a blog post. So here's that same blog post that I showed you the call to action in the browser before. I personally just find it easier to create my blog post in the WordPress dashboard. I very rarely use Thrive to create my actual blog post. So here's my blog post, blah, 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 blah. So once I get this all dialed in, right, if you come back up, right, you publish that out, save it, now come back and you're going to click launch Thrive Architect. All right, so here's that blog post opened in Thrive Architect. Now you can adjust WordPress content inside Thrive, but what's gonna happen is it basically opens your WordPress dashboard inside Thrive. So let me show you. If I click, so the whole blog post that I created inside my WordPress dashboard is wrapped in this WordPress content feature, right? So you can see the border, it goes all the way down my blog post. If I click this, and I click over here and say edit WordPress content, I can edit anything in Thrive, inside Thrive. Okay, so if I found something, an error or something inside Thrive that I needed to change in my blog post, I can take care of that in Thrive, no problem. So you'll just make those changes and then click save. All right, so let's scroll to the bottom and I'll show you how to add that symbol. All right, so right here you see mine's in here. Okay, so I've got this, you can see right here, Thrive symbol. So if I click on that, there's that peach. I can edit this or can unlink it. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this just so I can show you how this works. So let's say I just had my blog post. There's the WordPress content. We come back to the main menu, select templates and symbols. 
Now instead of searching in your template library, you're going to click over here to symbols and here are your symbols. So I'm going to select this branding guide call to action, not the test I created because I want to get that real one back in there. So we'll select that, click choose symbol and bam, there it is back in my blog post. Now you just have to save that and that is how you get the call to action at the end. Now if you ever came back, let's go back to Thrive. If you ever want to change that, again, you're going to click in this symbol. You're going to say edit as symbol. You're going to update it. You're going to save your page. This will save on this page and it will roll out to anywhere else that you've used that symbol. That is pretty fucking cool, right? So there you have it. Some great time-saving tips to cut down on, you know, recreating the wheel every time, cut down on your design time, and truly, I'm telling you, I told you by the end of this series that you will be able to create fly as fuck, beautifully branded pages and content in a matter of minutes, right? This is part of it, using all these kind of tips and tricks that I'm showing you. Don't style your headings and your buttons and things that are you are using again and again. Don't do that over and over. Save it as a template. Save what you need on a global level as a symbol. Get your font theme in there. Get your color palette in there. If you have any questions about anything else as far as time-saving stuff goes, of course, pop those questions in the comments section below and I will be happy to help. And again, I know I'm always harping, but if you're loving this plugin, you're loving this visual editor and you haven't grabbed your copy of Thrive Architect, I would be forever grateful if you purchase through my affiliate link, which I've got linked below this video or to the side of this video, depending on where you're watching it. Um, for you, click that, snatch this shit up because it is going to change your web design game. All right, in the next lesson, we're going to tackle thank you pages. So I'm going to show you the three most popular types of thank you pages and exactly how to build those thumb of bitches out using Thrive Architect. So I'll see you in the next lesson.